okay very good <coughs> so uh, you are safe now right fine theek hai chalo ghar ja ke call kar dena yeah. all the best bye okay so uh, i have prepared that obi uh, sorry i have prepared the question bank for uh, one and two chapter and uh, i posted it in the group i think you people might have seen uh, can anybody just confirm it if you have seen the question bank yes sir just through chat box yes, uh, yes, can you just confirm okay fine so sumalata is saying that she has seen that question don't get looking at the question man that is the first thing okay if you just see the uh, you won't have to see the book initially just see all the uh, slides that are and if you are not getting any questions or what to write and all these things just see the question and just see all the slides there are many slides prepared i told you from the very beginning that this subject if you try to attack in one day and if you try to uh, finish preparation in one day it will not happen okay so first two chapters are uh, comparatively little more difficult what i found because third chapter fourth chapter this is more related to electronics and all uh, so third chapter we are going to start today in that third chapter we will find there are a lot of lot of things about electrochemistry and uh, though it is chemistry but somehow it is related to us okay, but first two chapters will is totally mechanical and uh, it is a lot little bit of imagination required in uh, addressing all the issues whatever we have found in chapter 1 and chapter 2 so uh, uh, see the questions questions are listed as per the slides so first job is to download all the eight slides of uh, module 1 and all the nine slides of module 2 so if you are having a laptop or desktop it is easier for you to do that or if you can take the print out of the question bank and with the questions if you see uh, all the ppts all the eight ppts of module 1 and nine ppts of module 2 you will find all the questions are very well aligned okay so there is nothing uh, asked which is not taught in the class there is nothing asked in the list which is uh, not discussed in the class and all the uh, lectures are uploaded in youtube so while preparing uh, for exam or while answering the question in oba you can uh, listen to the lectures and you can uh, find out so ia whatever we know till now ia will not be online ia will be offline only and it will be a proctored exam uh, so when the situation becomes little better uh, maybe it is one ia or maybe it will be two ia so as policies are not decided so don't ask us at present nobody knows uh, what is going to happen after two weeks nobody knows what is going to happen after one month so when will it happen how will it happen i don't know but only thing is it will not be online this is final that ia will be offline and some exam will be offline so start preparing and you are having enough time at your hand uh, all the notes are given to you book is there all the ppts question bank everything is there so please request please prepare all this uh, questions whichever is given question looks big but if you see the ppts answer is not that big only concept you have to develop and uh, Uh, don't uh, tell me it is theoretical or something it is not theoretical you have to understand those concepts and you have to write in your own language in the exam and whatever is given in the ppt if you write only that much you will get 3 marks or 4 marks out of 10 okay so it is not only that much you have to elaborate those answers okay so whenever you are writing about something let's say you are writing about uh, mechanical a uh, transmission that is all that geared transmission and all this thing so first you have to start explaining from what is meant by transmission what is meant by gear what is uh, the different gear sets are there then you have to draw the diagram of gear set and then you have to write below the diagram this is the uh, four or five gear sets which are there then you have to write what is uh, manual transmission what are the advantages disadvantages how it functions what is the difference between manual and auto transmission and finally what are the applications so uh, you people are very lazy in writing that is a problem you are very good in preparation but you are very lazy in writing because uh, generally the way is uh, if there is a one page okay both sides plus another page so uh, three pages you have to write for 10 marks three pages means not double side three page means if you consider double side 
uh, one and a half page uh, or uh, single side if you consider three pages so double side page one and a half page and single side page three pages you have to write that means one side of one page another side and third page so all the diagrams advantage disadvantage application scope basic introduction principle uh, functioning if there are different types you have to talk about types so start preparing the answer so oba i have given to you uh, i have not given to you but i'll give it give it to you even if i am asking it for 5 marks write about 10 marks so think that it's a 10 mark question and prepare it okay because oba is kind of a precursor for ia in ia what all questions we are going to ask uh, the way you are going to answer ia that should reflect in oba though the fundamental of oba is different but under this covid scenario under this lockdown okay so oba is a preparation for ia so how to write how much to write what to write uh, the questions will not be repeated that is for sure in oba and ia it might be it might not be i am not commenting on that but uh, start preparing the answer the way you would write in the final exam so start writing the 10 marks answer properly you are having the book you are having the notes aram se baith ke acche se likho so don't uh, uh, copy the questions uh, because it is not uh, very much important to submit it because everybody will be getting a kind of 10 out of 10 in oba that is not the motto but i am giving you home assignment because whatever you are writing three four five questions whatever you are writing acche se likho and write impressive draw the diagram so that it is very much impressive that way you prepare your oba so question bank uh, oba questions maybe in one two days i'll try to upload so lot of other things are also going on uh, so i'll try to upload as soon as possible fine then we are going to start with uh, module number 3 module number 3 is about uh, different charging elements okay so the name of the module number 3 i will upload the slide uh, give me some time it is called as energy storage and regeneration so just let me uh, uh allow just give me time to upload the slide so everything you will get in the book itself uh the book uh, but it is not in a sequence i told you uh this is module number 3 i think the slide is uh, visible at your end yes so i think i am audible okay so there will come a lot of electrochemistry layer there will come uh, a lot of thermodynamic related things and uh, this is actually our topic for uh, module 3 and we'll try to finish it as soon as possible because now you are at home i am also at home getting time to prepare the slides so we can go very fast and all the basic uh, struggle is over now all the things will be in the domain of uh, electrical only so energy storage and regeneration so there are mainly four uh, header topics in this uh, first is actually the electrochemical battery and its types okay so how the electrochemical battery works or how the battery works we have studying since our 10th grade uh, that thing will be repeated today uh, so pbso4 h2so4 alkaline battery uh, lead acid battery Uh, and lithium ion battery maybe we will see in the different battery technologies but initially there are five definitions what is the electrochemical reaction thermodynamic voltage and specific energy partially we will see today and uh, next day that is friday we will try to see specific power specific energy and there are different battery technologies for ev hev and very important thing battery management system okay so you can say that this is almost 40% of the syllabus and you can find it in the book of ehsani module number or chapter number 13 so previous uh, chapter all the uh, whatever you have studied in the previous chapter that is different types of motors and all that was in chapter number 7 directly we are jumping to uh, module number or chapter number 13 uh, to understand about different energy storage or energy supply so name of the chapter is energy storage and regeneration so understand this we have to first see what is the electrochemical batteries and its types second thing is ultra capacitors so ultra capacitor is kind of a capacitor which are charged uh, to its extent so very high charge is given and then uh, it is kept like that and we are going to find that it is not going to uh, decrease its charge so what you are doing 
it is for quite a lot of time. And when they are required, the uh, ultra capacitor will be giving the charge output. Okay, so this is what's called as the second type, which is called as uh, third thing we will be seeing is uh, ultra high speed flywheels. What is meant by flywheels? What is meant by ultra high speed flywheels? Uh, we will find out. So I think it is in a uh, mechanical domain. So we have seen what is a flywheel. A uh, flywheel is generally applied to the crankshaft and it is an integral part of the engine. So how flywheel is storing energy is a mechanical store of energy. Uh, so because this is because of inertia actually. Whenever the flywheel is connected to engine, even if the engine stops suddenly, the flywheel keeps on rotating the engine because it's a huge mass and it's a big size. And it stores the inertia. So even the flywheel keeps on rotating. That means all the uh, pistons and all these things, if suddenly stops, then also flywheel rotates for a certain time, and then the uh, crankshaft actually stops. So initially, uh, whenever starting the motor, so starting of engine is a very important part. In that case, there is a starter motor, and the starter motor actually is a very small motor, but it's having huge power. Okay, so that huge uh, power wall of small motor, it with a pinion uh, gear arrangement, it rotates a flywheel. Okay, and that indicates the rotation of the engine. So flywheel is a very important part uh, for starting of the uh, engine. Obviously, the engine is fundamentals of regenerative. So when uh, while we are doing the second module, okay, so in the uh, second module we have seen the chopper, so DC chopper. Uh, there are two types of chopper, class A chopper we have seen, and we have seen the two quadrant chopper. So in the chopper, I told you, uh, so first quadrant operation is forward motoring, second quadrant of operation is uh, forward braking. Okay, and uh, I have given you that example. So there was a video you have found. So in case of forward motoring, suppose we are going uh, through a slope. Uh, so, so we are going to so, so piece, speed is increasing, torque is increasing. So whenever it is in the second quadrant operation, so torque is there in the x-axis, uh, speed is there in the y-axis. So torque is negative, but speed is positive. Okay. So in that case, we are going down for a slope. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, this is called as forward braking. And that is actually producing some uh, energy and it is giving back the energy to the source. That is called as regenerative braking. So those who drive car, uh, they can find out that uh, whenever we are in a slope, at that time, even if we are pressing the clutch, so generally, if whenever we are on a plane, if you are pressing the clutch, the car uh, speed, it reduces. So it is like a braking action. Okay. But whenever we are in a slope, if you are pressing the clutch, uh, the speed will increase. Okay. So that is a kind of a regenerative braking kind of a thing we are finding when we are in a slope and going downhill. So what is regenerative braking? What is the energy consumption in braking? Braking power energy on the front and rear wheels, brake system for EV, HEV, all the things we will find in uh, next module. So I have made a mistake. I will correct it now itself. Uh, you will find this regenerative braking in module four. Okay, so I've just corrected the uh, uh, module number. So you please see it. That is in module number uh, 14, you will find uh, the regenerative braking. So, along with module 13 and 14, we will be able to finish this uh, module 3 of our syllabus. So, this is the introduction of syllabus for energy storage and regeneration. So, first three methods are energy storage. In that, first two methods are electrical type of energy storage, third one is mechanical type of energy storage, and last one is regenerative braking so while it braking we are wasting some energy uh, because of mechanical braking we are generating torque in the reverse direction but uh, there also whatever energy is wasted in braking some energy we are pulling back okay so whatever energy uh, wastage is done some energy you are pulling back and giving back to the uh, system storage that is battery and all so i'm starting officially uh, this module number uh, three and again, every module we are taking kind of eight uh, hours. In this case, we will try to finish it within seven hours because we have uh, used uh, nine hours in module number two. Okay. 
so i will try to finish this thing uh, in within 7 hours or if i need some extra lecture i will complete it because we are all at home uh, so i will uh, ask you for joining some extra session and we can do that okay so we are starting with uh, what is called as peaking power source and energy storage so this is the introduction of this uh, module 13 or chapter 13 in esa what they're saying is the energy storages are defined as devices that stores energy deliver energy outside so storing energy and delivering energy so delivering energy means discharging and accept energy from outside so these three are the uh, main jobs of any energy sources so it has to store it has to deliver and it has to get charged so charge store deliver these are the three jobs that uh, any energy sources are doing so several types of energy storages have been uh, proposed for electric vehicle and electric hybrid vehicle Mm. this energy storages mainly include chemical batteries so that's the first type of thing we are going to see today ultra capacitor or super capacitor they are same thing okay ultra capacitor and super capacitor ultra high speed flywheel what is flywheel i told you it's a uh, storing energy and ultra high speed flywheel so this topic also if you go to the previous slide you will find that ultra high speed flywheel is the case study for this chapter so previous chapter module 2 case study was dc uh, motor power generation and characteristic so that we have already done uh, first module uh, case study is still remaining what is that that is called as present state of ic engine okay, i told you that i'll write it down and i'll give it to you so one hour presentation i might give you on what is the present status of ic engine so there is a, a special topic on ultra high speed flywheel and fuel cells so fuel cell we are not going to study in this chapter this is also energy producer so this stage this chapter is not talking about production of energy this is mainly talking about generation of energy uh, sorry storage of energy okay so fuel cell is kind of a generation system like that so there are many requirements so this uh, paragraph is very important whatever parameters are there we have to understand that so there are many requirements for energy storages applied in an automotive application such as specific energy what is that we will see uh, specific power Uh, energy efficiency maintenance requirement management cost environmental adaptation and friendliness environmental adaptation and friendliness means which uh, storing technology is environmental friendly and which is easy for us also to apply so what is the main problem in uh, uh, applying this electric vehicle so it is too much friendly for us at present because we don't have many charging stations uh, in abroad they have established the electricity charging stations and all but in our country uh, charging stations are not very well established okay so it is not very friendly for us so many people want to use uh, uh, electric vehicle but because of the problem of charging uh, they might not be using it okay so environmental friendly and friendly for us for usage and uh, next is safety so safety is a very important factor uh evs are safe okay cng carrying is little unsafe a uh, fuel cell based technology is very unsafe because we have to carry hydrogen cylinder though at present we are not carrying hydrogen cylinder for fuel cell we are storing the fuel cell in hydride form hydride doesn't blast hydrogen cylinder they might blast likewise so these are main topics whenever uh, see not not possible to uh, teach everything in the class and this is a elective so you have to Uh, find out um, the broad scope of everything whatever is discussed in the class so syllabus is designed so that we can teach you the basics of it uh, the broader things broader scales uh, you have to figure out from uh, different websites uh, and different higher uh, range books research papers and all this thing. so each of this thing each of this thing can be a research topic whatever parameters are given each of this thing can, can be a research topic So now is a very important paragraph coming it is saying that for application of an ev specific energy is the first consideration so how much is the specific energy for that we should know what is specific energy okay so we have to check specific energy and we have to uh, see whether we can use it for ev so specific energy of certain value we are expecting for that uh, supply to be used as a storage or that thing to be used as storage so for every storage there is a specific energy now uh, we have to see whether it satisfies or not since it limits the vehicle range okay so um, specific energy more means it can uh, be used for a longer range okay 
so on the other hand for hv application specific energy becomes less important so for electric vehicle a uh, one charge how far it can go okay so that is directly proportional to specific energy for hybrid electric vehicle specific energy is less important and specific power is the first consideration because all the energy is from the energy source let be engine or fuel cell so engine and fuel cell mixture is a hybrid thing whenever we are using engine and fuel cell together it is not about how far it can go because we are having abundant energy energy uh, coming from uh, oil energy coming from fuel cell in hv i am talking about so ev in one charge how far it can go this is uh, defined by specific energy uh, specific energy is less important for hv and specific power is more important because now we one charge is not the criteria now we are having enough of fuel cell energy enough of uh, oil in our case so sufficient power is needed to ensure the vehicle performance so whether we are getting uh, maximum power from the vehicle or not that is of many importance so particularly during acceleration hill climbing and regenerative braking so what we have to decide is whether we are getting more power from the vehicle or not so for ev one charge how far it can go is the main thing for hv how much power we are getting from the device from the car that is of main importance so these are the things you have to understand of course other requirements should be fully considered in the vehicle a uh, drive train development whenever you are devising the drive train or power drive uh, there are other considerations which will come in case of vehicle design next what we are going to see is uh, our next topic will be uh, how to uh, design the different battery and electrochemical batteries so electrochemical battery we have seen from the uh, childhood uh, from our 10th standard or 12th standard we have seen the battery so i will not be going uh, very i'll be going very fast in this so there is a battery which is shown in the light right side so there is a negative electrode there is a positive electrode there is uh, electrolyte and what you can say is uh, there in mix uh, reactions occur and all these things and what we find is there is a storage of electron in one of the electrodes okay and uh, these are the two things uh, they are connected uh, by the load so whichever thing you want your uh, whichever thing we want to drive so if we want to drive a motor okay so then we connect the motor so motor is a load which is a inductive kind of a load we connect the motor between the uh, positive and negative so cathode anode all these things are there and we find that electricity is passing through that uh, device uh, motor and it is running so batteries are electrochemical devices that convert the electrical energy into potential chemical energy during charging so there are two steps charging and discharging so it converts the electrical uh, energy into potential chemical energy so we are uh, giving uh, electrical energy initially and that is getting converted into uh, chemical energy so we are giving electricity to it for charging and it is getting uh, converted into chemical energy means it is actually storing a lot of uh, electrons in one of the electrodes so it is creating a uh, it is getting a bias bias means at one electrode many electrons are getting stored other electrons uh, other electro uh, other electrode is deprived of electrons so one electrode is getting too much storage of electron other electrode is getting uh, no electrons so we are creating a bias we are creating a potential difference and now you are connecting these two electrodes by means of a load then from whichever electrode a uh, huge amount of electron is uh, stored uh, the electron will flow from higher potential to the lower potential and uh, that will called as a discharge so converts chemical energy into electrical energy during discharge so what is meant by chemical energy chemical energy is nothing but storage of uh, electrons in one electrode okay so that is nothing but called as uh, storage in the form of chemical energy so this first uh, paragraph is very important batteries are <coughs> excuse me electrochemical devices that convert the electrical energy into chemical energy that means you have to charge first and while charging you have to see that many electrons are getting stored in one electrode and then discharge so chemical energy is getting again converted into electrical energy like that so battery is composed of uh, several cells so this is only one cell we have uh, shown uh, so a typical electrochemical battery cell one cell we have shown such many cells so bosch 
uh, whatever is a 12 volt battery inside that there are six such cells and together they are connected in series and they are producing a 12 volt battery so in bosch battery remember this thing so uh, six uh, two volt cells are connected to create a bigger uh, battery for bosch a 12 volt battery so battery is composed of several cells stacked together a cell is an independent and complete unit that processes all the uh, electrochemical properties so a battery cell consists of three primary elements so two electrode and one uh, electrolyte okay so the two electrodes are called as positive and negative electrode and electrolyte and the electrodes are immersed into the electrolyte now ampere hour so initially two or three slides we will be talking about some uh, very basic terminologies related to battery so this slide is very important i forgot to put some star but those who are listening to lecture please you can write it down that this slide is very important so battery manufacturers using a specific battery with colorimetric capacity so it is called as a uh, colorimetric capacity and it is given by ampere hour so there are many ways we can define the battery uh, energy storage units ampere hour is a very uh, very well defined and uh, mostly uh, this thing is used for rating the battery so ampere hour it is defined as the number of ampere uh, hours gained when discharging the battery from a fully charged state until v terminal drops to the cut off voltage so initially what we are finding is so x axis is the cell voltage and y axis is a, uh, a time okay so discharge time x axis so initially it starts with this value okay, initially it starts with this value for certain value so for all the six voltages all the six cells whichever is there in the bosch battery so this starting time is 2 volt okay at starting time the voltage is 2 volt so what it says it is defined as the number of ampere hours gained when discharging the battery from a fully charged state so fully charged state means it it will be starting from 2 volt and the battery will be giving out some current okay so how much current is giving battery is giving 2.2 ampere current how long for 20 hours so this is the nominal uh, ampere hour for a bosch battery which is having uh, 2.2 uh, ampere okay so it will be giving 2.2 ampere but below that it will suddenly fall to after this point it will fall to a certain uh, uh, below a certain cut off voltage so initially if it was 2 volt then it is falling below 1.85 volt so that is for the battery and overall whenever you are putting all the six uh, cells together uh, they should be supplying you 2.2 ampere but for 20 hours so how much is the ampere hour uh, normal ampere hour it is 20 into 2.2 that is 44 ampere hour so this is how we are uh, finding the specification of a battery so battery is 44 ampere hour means for 20 hours so this is how the testing is done for 20 hours it is supplying 2.2 ampere and cut off voltage of typical battery so it is falling below uh, 1.85 volt or if you are talking about a big cell it is falling below around uh, 8 volt or something so a 12 volt battery falling less than 8 volt uh, so there is a cut off voltage so you can find all these details in Bosch battery you can check in so when we call it it is discharged because suddenly it falls below a certain uh, voltage so there is around 8 volt or something and uh, till that it is supplying 2.2 ampere for 20 hours now this is a normal case okay now there are some accelerated testing of the battery so the same battery has different number of ampere hours suddenly i said 2.2 ampere hour is a nominal thing that means for 20 hours it is going to supply 2.2 ampere for 20 hours so it is a 44 ampere hour battery but we can do some stress test so battery uh, has different number of ampere hours at different discharge rate generally the capacity becomes smaller with larger uh, discharge rate so i show this graph this graph is very important it will be asked in the exam please prepare there are three ranges i have shown so it's same battery okay if it is supplying for 2.2 ampere it can supply it for 20 r so what is the total ampere r 2.2 into 20 that comes to be 44 ampere r so 44 ampere r whenever i'm talking about that means it is nominal range or normal range it is for 20 hours then there comes reserve capacity now this vehicle is in a kind of a cold situation okay so maybe minus 5 degree to plus 5 degree centigrade and all so initially we have to uh, give more current to the uh, starting system okay so in that case we are checking whether uh, the reserve capacity of the battery is perfect or not so here it is saying the battery manufacturers usually specify a normal range of the battery with number of ampere hours along with the current rate so for example 44 ampere hour battery at a c by 20 rate 
so c by 20 rate means it will be charging for 20 hours charge by 20 so it will be uh, not charging it will be giving out discharging for 20 hours with 2.2 ampere so 44 ampere hour battery at c by 20 rate so this is how the specification is mentioned that means for 20 hours it will be producing 2.2 ampere multiply this two and you are getting 44 ampere hour ampere discharge current capacity over 20 hours so same battery has rc of 25 ampere means rc means reserve capacity same thing if you are testing for one hour that means in one hour constantly how much maximum current it can give it will be 25 ampere okay so you can see that for smaller time of one hour if you want a maximum constant discharge in that case that 44 ampere hour reduces to 25 ampere hour so reserve capacity for the same 44 ampere hour battery is 25 uh, ampere hour that means 25 ampere for one hour normal range is 2.2 ampere for 20 hours that is 44 ampere hour. and something called as a cold cranking ampere what is meant by cold cranking when the vehicle is maybe at minus 25 degrees centigrade so battery goes too much deep into sleep suddenly bring it back to on state so when battery gives enough supply to the uh, starting system starting system gives uh, enough jerk to the motor uh, flywheel starts and uh, the engine starts okay so whenever the car is in suppose minus 25 degree or something huge amount of current is pulled from the battery and during that time whether battery is able to sustain that pull is called as cold cranking ampere or called as cca <clears throat> so it happens maybe the different specifications of different batteries are there but here what we are saying is for one minute the battery has to supply 170 ampere okay so all these three things are talked about the same battery for normal range in india 30 degrees centigrade very healthy uh, temperature 20 hours if you can uh, keep the battery 2.2 ampere it can give so that comes to be 44 ampere hour normal range second is reserve capacity so temperature falls a little bit minus 5 to plus 5 degrees centigrade or so for one hour we check how much it will be producing 25 ampere same thing at minus 25 degree centigrade vehicle in that case initially huge amount of current is expected or fetched from the battery so in one minute it has to supply 170 ampere so all these three ratings with this graph so these two graphs and this slide is very important please prepare it it is called as different graphs of ampere hour the top one is cell voltage versus discharge time and the bottom one is three uh, different ratings of uh, the battery first one is normal rating second one is rc third thing is cca prepare all these definitions properly then there is coming another very important thing which is called as state of charge so what is the definition of state of charge so most important parameter of a battery is soc which is defined as the ratio of remaining capacity so how much charge is remaining with the full charged capacity so if fully charged there are 10 units of charged charge and after uh, discharge for certain times there is three units of charge left so three and three unit is left remaining and when it is fully charged there may be 10 units of a uh, charge so 3 by 10 so soc is 30 percent likewise so with this definition of fully charged battery has soc of 100 percent and a discharged battery has soc of zero percent the term fully discharged okay so fully discharged means it goes to zero percent it never goes to zero percent before that only it starts showing that uh, it cannot deliver any uh, constant current to the load okay so it never goes to zero percent okay so the term fully discharged sometimes causes confusion because of the different capacities at different discharge rate so there is another problem and the problem is uh, how are you going to measure uh, discharged for all these three cases okay so discharging is happening at different rate for all these three cases there is a first case second case third case first case discharge is happening very slowly and for cold cranking discharge is happening very fast rate so whenever i am saying fully discharged then about which rate are we talking about whether we are talking about normal rate or we are talking about cold cranking so whenever we are uh, defining soc whenever we are saying fully discharge at the time the rate and different cutoff voltages that we have to define at the same time so there is a nominal state of charge and there is state of charge for critical applications or a cca or rc kind of applications these two things are different change in soc in a specific time interval with discharging or charging current it 
may be expressed as so very important uh, formula so associate in your time is equal to soc in the just previous time instant okay so uh, time instant is given in seconds so associate any time so you are charging a uh, battery or you are discharging a battery so battery is getting discharged means previous second the uh, energy was higher and the next instant the energy is lower okay so in that case soc t minus 1 it was higher and soc t at present uh, the energy is lower soc is lower okay and that is depending on what that is depending on the charging current or discharging current so if you are charging it at soc t minus 1 it will be less at soc t it will be more so soc t is nothing but um, now and soc t minus 1 is delayed by one unit so it is the charging current or discharging current mu n so what is mu n and all this thing it is given so soc t is the battery soc at time instant t present t minus 1 is the initial soc at time instant t minus 1 so for charging soc t minus 1 will be less soc t will be more and for discharging soc t minus 1 will be more and soc t will be less okay yeah, so mu n is the nominal capacity of the battery in ampere hour so nominal capacity means generally over 20 hours whatever is the uh, current discharge current that is called as nominal so that is 2.2 ampere for 20 hours and it is the battery current charging or discharging at time t and delta t is the time step so time step here generally we are taking as uh, one second so here there is a numerical and we will do it so a 12 volt battery capacity uh, 12 volt battery with a capacity of 500 ampere hour that means whenever it is initially fully charged it is 500 ampere hour that is supplying a load of 0.6 ohm okay so here um, how this 0.6 ohm is uh, affecting the circuit we will find so 500 is the ampere hour so that is the uh, capacity of the battery 12 volt is the supply and 0.6 ohm is the uh, load so how much will be the current drawn it uh, by the load so it will be nothing but 12 divided by 0. 0.6 so that is 20 ampere so from this battery as the battery is a 12 volt battery and load is 0. 0.6 ohm so 12 by 0. 0.6 that is 20 ampere will be fetched from this 500 ampere hour battery now what will be the state of charge after three hours so if this 20 ampere is being fetched by the battery in normal condition uh, for three hours so after three hours how much will be the charge remaining in that battery that is we are supposed to find out so initially the discharge is not uh, taking place so initially 500 ampere hour is intact in the battery so that is 100 percent so what is saying is battery is initially fully charged soc t minus one is 100 percent so what will be soc t soc t will be after three hours hours so what is the time step here time step is three hours or 180 minutes okay likewise so load current is equal to battery current is equal to 12 by 0.6 is equal to 20 ampere so put it in the formula soc t we are going to calculate soc t minus one that is nothing but 100 percent so we are doing it in uh, percent only that's why i'm writing 100 if somebody wants to do put one soc t as one in that case you have to put here the output side this has to be put in percentage as well okay so soc t is 100 percent uh, it it is 20 why minus because now this is discharging okay so if it is charging then this will be plus as this is discharging this 20 ampere is continuously being phased from this 500 ampere hour hence this is given as minus 20 divided by 500 what is 500 they have said mu n mu n is the nominal capacity of the battery in ampere hour so here it is said as 500 ampere hour multiplied by 3 so here uh, this hour is given in hour so if i say that after 30 minutes how much is going to be the state of charge in that case you have to write this as half i think it is understandable okay so hour if i ask of after 30 minutes so minute you have to convert in hour so 30 minutes means half an hour so in that case this quantity you have to uh, write as half okay multiplied by 100 so as yes, this is 100 percent initial charge 500 ampere hour means 100 percent this is 100 okay multiplied by 100 or if you are keeping it uh, like in this bracket the whole into 100 in that case you have to write the initial thing as one okay so this 500 ampere hour you can represent as one 500 ampere you can represent it as uh, percentage as 100 percent so if you are doing it as 100 percent first this is 100 and here you have to multiply as 100 if you are keeping it as one so one plus minus two by 500 into three whole bracket into 100 you have to do so now you are finding it to be 88 percent 
Okay, so after three hours from this 500 ampere hour battery, if 20 ampere is continuously being fetched, then after three hours, 88 percent of 500 ampere hour will be remaining in the battery. So this is how. So those who are taking part in uh, this e wagon channel uh, challenge or something, whatever uh, our electrical department has floated there, the state of charge calculation is very important. So you can calculate and you can show how much is the energy required uh, after uh, after every charging, every discharging, or if you are drawing the same amount of power for running the vehicle for a certain amount of time, after uh, running it, uh, how much will be the uh, state of charge after a certain time so for how long you can uh, drive the vehicle all those calculations can be done so this is a very important numerical <coughs> please prepare uh, we can ask numerical on this in the final exam so this is a very important small easy numerical but very effective numerical to understand now these are discharge characteristics of many battery so you are seeing that if we are asking for very high current okay uh, so initially it is starting at 1.85 volt this is the initial voltage cell voltage and it is dropping below a certain volt but we are getting uh, for 60 so 100 ampere we are getting for uh, kind of 60 ampere hour so you can find out 60 into uh, or 100 divided by 60 that is the time okay, that is the time for which 100 ampere will be produced so uh, 60 divided by 100 60 divided by 100 means around 0.6 okay so 0.6 hour 0.6 hour means 36 minutes so for 36 minutes the battery will give you 100 ampere now if you are seeing the 70 ampere it will be for a longer amount of time so let's say it is around 80 okay so how much will be the uh, time so in that case 80 divided by 70 so 80 divided by 70 means around uh, around 9.9 .9 you can say so 0.9 of one hour that means around 54 minutes so if you are getting uh, 70 ampere current you can get it for 54 minutes and accordingly it goes on so lowest is 10 so if you are fetching only 10 ampere current from the battery then you can go for longer period of time so maybe around a uh, lot of time you can get likewise so this is the same graph which was shown previously okay so previously i had shown you this graph so this graph and next graph whatever we are seeing are the same but here they are showing different capacity and this graph is given in the book of asani so for evs and hevs the energy capacity is more important than ampere hour okay uh, in the volumetric capacity the energy capacity is directly so we are entering now the actual uh, parameters that we want to measure energy capacity is directly associated with vehicle operation and energy capacity ec is given as a function of v into it over dt okay, so this is an integration over 0 to t so what is the voltage supplied and how much is the current supplied multiply that and you are integrating it over time dt and whatever you are finding is this v is actually a function of current and state of charge how much voltage or terminal voltage you can get that is actually a function of how much current you are supplying and state of charge so if it uh, current reduces very fast in that case voltage also will deplete very fast so v is the terminal voltage and v is a function of current and state of charge these are uh, interrelationship that you have to remember. So three parameters we are going to see. For every parameter, one or two slides are prepared. So lead acid battery, uh, we are going to see. So we have seen this since long, so much time I will not give. So whenever the uh, sulfuric acid solution is given, it gets divided into two things. So two H plus uh, and SO4 two minus. So cations and anions as electrolyte. So these electrodes are made of porous lead. So that is the anode. Anode is a porous lead and uh, porous lead oxide okay so pbso4 oh, sorry pbo2 uh, that is the uh, cathode okay so anode is pb and cathode is pbo2 so during discharge uh, the lead is consumed and lead surface is formed and the anode chemical reaction is given by this so you are finding this is the anode reaction in that case uh, pbso4 is being formed directly so this is the negative uh, thing this is the negative electrode there's a positive electrode in this case you are finding that pbso4 is being produced here so this is pbso4 and here also pbso4 and electrons are getting released okay so whenever i am doing a chemical reaction electrons are getting released that is very important thing and then so this is in the anode reaction and uh, the reaction releases so the cathode reaction it is talking about the reaction releases two electrons so anode reaction is releasing two electrons thereby gives rise to an excess negative charge on the electrode so electrodes are actually 
uh, storing a lot of uh, free electrons so that is actually called as a charging method so that is relieved by a flow of electrons to the external circuit so one of the electrode is uh, holding a lot of uh, negative charges electron and then we are connecting uh, one electron through the load with the other electron and the electron wherever the charge density is too much electron density is too much that is flowing through the load and going to the other electron and it is getting compensated so by a flow of electrons through the electrical external circuit and the positive electrode like this uh, a positive electrode pbo2 gets converted to pbso4 and water is formed the chemical reaction of the cathode is given by the reaction which is given below so cathode reaction we are finding that again the negative electrode is becoming pb so through the anode reaction pb is becoming pbso4 and there is electron is produced and uh, so this is the first reaction and through the cathode reaction the pbso4 is again going back to pb because electrons are released and water is being produced so it gets converted to pbso4 and water is formed so cathode is becoming pbso4 but uh, the negative electrode is becoming pb again so again it is going back to the initial stage so this is the cathode reaction this is the anode reaction and all the reactions are given in one uh, one equation together so pb plus pbo2 plus 2h2so4 so 2h2so4 is nothing but uh, the electrolyte PBSO4 is a uh, positive electrode and PB is the negative electrode. So you can see here, negative electrode is PB, positive electrode is uh, PB, uh, PBO2. So here the same thing we are doing, PBO2 is a positive electrode, PB is the negative electrode and H2SO4 is the electrolyte. So in this direction it is discharging, in the left direction it is charging. So while charging we are finding that the negative electrode again is becoming PB. Okay. So which was uh, becoming PBSO4 or producing PBSO4 and water in the forward direction. So these are very simple chemical reactions. Uh, you know it already. You have studying this thing in the 10th uh, 12th standard. So the lead by acid battery has a cell voltage of 2.03 volt. We consider it to be 2 volt. So this is the main thing we want. So in one Bosch uh, battery, actually we are connecting such uh, 6 uh, 2.03 volt battery. So we are getting around. Uh, 12 volt battery because six such cells are connected back to back so which is affected by the concentration of electrolyte so electrolyte concentration is very important thing and uh, previously we used to put water inside the battery to keep the concentration same but now this battery we are not supposed to put the water so once it is sealed it is sealed and it goes on forever so just find out the technologies by which uh, initially we used to we had to put water but now we are not putting water so what is the technology for that battery technology find it out then uh, thermodynamic voltage so this is all about gives free energy so energy released by a battery cell reaction is given by the change in gives free energy which is usually expressed in per mole quantities so whatever is the reactants we are giving whatever is the uh, products after the chemical reaction so it is nothing but the gives energy uh, in the product that means what is the final output minus gives energy in the reactant so product gives minus reactant gives is whatever we are getting at the output side and uh, gi and gj so gi is nothing but the free energy of species i okay which is nothing but product and gj are the uh, species uh, j which is the reactant so from reactant only we are uh, getting the energy so product minus reactant is the energy delta g which we are getting at the output side and delta g is completely converted into electric energy that is so delta g is equal to minus n f b r what is the thermodynamic voltage thermodynamic voltage is b r okay so is uh, uh, here n is the number of electrons transferred in the reaction f is a faraday's constant um, and v r is the reversible voltage which is also called as nonest potential ner nst you can check all these things in wikipedia so nonest potential is also called as a reversible voltage which is nothing but the thermodynamic voltage uh, which is received from the battery so in standard condition so there is a standard value of vr we are talking about in a standard condition 25 degrees centigrade and one atmospheric pressure the reversible open circuit voltage is given by vr0 so that is the initial optimum condition not optimum initial condition nominal condition minus delta g0 so delta g is what we have seen initially uh, gi minus gj okay so i is the product j is the reactant so after reaction and before reaction okay so their subtraction is given by delta g and if the reaction is done at 25 degree centigrade at one atmospheric pressure that uh, thermodynamic voltage is called as the nominal thermodynamic voltage minus delta g0 divided by n into f where n is nothing but number of electrons 
transferred in the reaction. So we have seen a battery, a lot of uh, electrons is getting transferred, produced, all those things. And F is nothing but the Faraday's constant in Coulomb's per mole. Now thermodynamic voltage can be already given. So this formula is already given in the previous space. So the change in the free energy and cell voltage in the chemical reaction is a function of activities of the solution species. So that's why concentration of H2SO4 is is very much important and finally you are finding that vr that is the thermodynamic voltage which is produced as the voltage of uh, the battery is nothing but rt divided by nf into ln so what is r r is the universal gas constant 8.31 joule per mole k and t is absolute temperature i'm sorry so what is vr given by vr given by nothing but uh, r into t into n into f ln activities in products and activities of reactants so whatever is the reactant whatever the products uh, their uh, ratio and natural log of that and vr0 is given by delta g0 and nf so those who want to leave you can leave i'll complete this lecture two more slides are remaining uh, you are having other lecture so you can leave specific energy specific energy is defined as the energy capacity per unit battery weight Okay, so we will see only one slide is remaining. We will see what is the specific energy in detail in the next lecture. So far, just I will do you the introduction. So these are three uh, important parameters we are going to study. So first is uh, whatever is the electrochemical reactions, all these things we have seen for a battery. Second is uh, VR, that is what is the thermodynamic voltage. We have seen that. And third one is specific energy. So uh, specific energy is different defined as the energy capacity per unit battery weight w into h watt hour per kg whatever is the weight of the battery with respect to that how much energy we are getting so the theoretical specific energy is the maximum energy that can be generated per unit total mass of cell reactants so uh, whenever we are talking about a vehicle we say that uh, how much is the average that means how much fuel you are get, giving and how much uh, average you are getting how 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 much how long it is running for every uh, liter of fuel okay so you can say that is kind of a uh, specific energy concept when you are talking about electrical vehicle so whenever you are talking about a battery whatever is the weight in kg okay uh, of the reactants how much watt hour you can get out of it so the theoretical specific energy is the maximum energy that can be generated per unit total mass of cell reactants now the definition is given here the energy in a battery cell can be expressed by gibbs free energy delta g we have explained in previous slide delta g is equal to reactant uh, i minus pro sorry product i minus reactant j uh, with respect to the theoretical specific energy so it is called as tse uh, or specific energy only the effective weights molecular weights of reactants and products are involved so you don't think that battery uh, casing and all these things they are considered in specific weight maybe not only the effective weights of the molecular weights of reactants and products are involved while calculating the specific energy. So specific energy theoretical. So ESPE theo is given by minus delta G by 3.6 summation of Mi unit is watt hour per kg. And delta G minus of uh, delta G we have found as minus NFVR. So NF is N is number of uh, electrons produced. F is the Faraday's constant. VR is the thermodynamic voltage. All these things we have seen. 3.6 new parameter is delta mi what is delta mi it is the sum of molecular weight of the individual species involved in battery reaction so in the previous only we have said that whenever we are uh, going to calculate the theoretical specific energy only the effective weights of molecular weights of reactants and products are considered so that is actually given by summation of mi is the sum of molecular weight of the individual species involved in the battery reaction so taking the lead battery, solid acid battery, as an example, if VR is equal to 2.03 volt. So from the previous slide, you have found thermodynamic voltage of uh, lead acid battery is a 2.03 volt. We told you that such six batteries we put together to generate that Bosch battery of 12 volt. So 2.03 volt is the uh, thermodynamic voltage. N is equal to 2. So only uh, electron number of electrons which are uh, going here and there and delta uh, sorry summation of mi is 642 gram so it is not even one kg so 0.642 gram uh, it is there which is the uh, sum of molecular weight of the individual species involved in the battery reaction so all these values if you put here and with that f f value is the faraday's constant you can uh, put it from the previous slide the value is given 96,000. how much it was uh, f value is 
96,495. So all these values, if you are putting together and you are calculating, what you will find is so n is 2, f is uh, 96,340 or something, uh, vr is 2.3. 3.6 is a constant and summation of mi summation of mi is 642 gram if you are just putting all together you are finding ese e specific theory that means a uh, specific theoretical energy you are finding as 170 watt hour per kg so this is a very important thing only the effective weights so effective weight is 642 gram from there you are finding that um, every uh, kg of this uh, reactant whatever we are using for charging battery or generating energy from the battery it is going to give you 170 watt hour okay so what is watt hour we know one hour uh, if it is giving one watt if battery is giving one watt for one hour we call it it's a one watt hour battery likewise uh, 642 gram of reactant is giving me 170 watt hour per kg this is found from the formula given above so you can substitute all these values and you can find out what is it so now a note on specific energy so detailed study on specific energy we will do next day this is just an introduction so what is said is from specific energy equation it is clear that highly electronegative elements so which elements are to be selected for battery material that comes from the specific energy understanding so this paragraph is very important try to understand highly electronegative element and highly electropositive element with low atomic weight so this is a condition uh, from this uh, discussion or whatever is given uh, before highly electronegative element which are the elements we will see later on and highly electropositive element both the things with low atomic weight if it is put together they produces an ideal couple for generation of higher specific energy hydrogen lithium or sodium would be the best choice for negative reactant that is highly uh, electronegative and lighter halogens oxygen and sulfur they will be highly electropositive and they are also with low atomic weights so hydrogen lithium sodium with uh, halogen oxygen and sulfur so this is the combination of best reactants if put together then they are going to give very high theoretical specific energy to put such couples together in a battery requires electrode designs for effective utilization of the contained active material as uh, well as electrolytes of high conductivity compatible with material in both electrodes so the way we are selecting the electrodes the way we are selecting the electrolyte and the way we are uh, carrying out the reaction it is all to create a huge potential difference between the highly electronegative element and highly electropositive element so whatever pb and pbo2 we have selected for lead acid battery whatever h2so4 we have selected for lead acid battery all are selected just to create this uh, highly electronegative element and highly electropositive element and their ideal combination so that we can get very high specific energy from the system so more discussion on specific energy we will do uh, next day so we are in the third parameter so we are supposed to study five parameters and then we will go for different types of uh, batteries okay so with this uh, third uh, parameter we have not done completely so more discussion on specific energy will be done next day i will conclude this session so again we will meet on friday definitely in one or two days i will upload your oba question that's all from me now thank you